Hi, my name is Steve Watson. I'm the Maricopa County School Superintendent, and thank you for joining us for this week's STEM Pro Live. Today we're joined by Jessica Parental and Jennifer Hutchins from the Odyssey Aquarium to share with us a little bit about what they do and how they work with the animals. Let's find out some more. Hi everybody, my name's Mary and I am the Senior Animal Care Specialist here at Odyssey Aquarium. Um, we're part of the Animal Care and Education team. So here at Odyssey, something that's extremely important to us is going to be that education factor. Um, and that's one of the ways that we have our outreach program um, and we wanna make sure that we reach everybody and get them inspired just as much as we are. Um, and Hutch, what's your story? Hi there, everybody. Uh, I do go by Hutch. My name is Jen Hutchins, so it's a pretty easy transition for me. Uh, so I've been known as Hutch my entire life, and uh, I am an animal care uh, specialist here at Odyssey Aquarium, and my main focus is the penguins. Uh, so uh, very hard cleaning is a very important part of my day, and I kind of had that worth ethic growing up. So uh, my parents were always very much, if you wanted an animal, you had to clean and feed up after it. Uh, uh, and make sure that you are taking care of your responsibilities. So that was instilled in me very, very young. And I always knew that I really wanted to work with animals. Uh, I actually forego, I forewent uh, several uh, birthday parties so that I could save up and go to SeaWorld for my eighth birthday. Uh, so it was always a very important part of my life and I knew that I wanted to not only be in education but I also wanted to work with animals. Uh, my background is extremely varied. Uh, when I first started out uh, in the employment world I started off as a lifeguard because swimming was a very important part of my life. Uh, as a small child I was always a fish. My mom actually put highlighted uh, hair bands in my hair so that she could find me, uh, as well as my sister. So we had different colored hair bands. Uh, so she, she was a very important part of my life, of course, and uh, she always told me, no matter how hard it got, try harder. Uh, so she definitely gave me the, the fuel to follow my dreams, and I told my guidance counselors in middle school and in high school that I knew exactly where I wanted to be. Uh, so I told them that I wanted to go to Fairleigh Dickinson University, and I wanted to work in animal care. And they always told me to keep my options open because they thought I'd be a great engineer or school teacher. Uh, there was a lot of different paths that they saw for me, but I knew exactly the path that I wanted to take. Uh, I've actually, uh, in animal care, I've varied it up quite a bit. I've worked in biomedical research. I've uh, been able to t teach math and science at a high school. Uh, and I've also worked in rehab and rescue uh, efforts. And then I did finally uh, find myself in an aquarium, uh, being able to work with marine mammals as well as hippos and penguins uh, gave me a really good drive. So that's where I was before coming out to Odyssey. Uh, my mom always thought I was going to be a school teacher, but very important part of my life is not only the education part, but also interacting with the animals every single day, building those relationships and sharing those relationships with our guests. Uh, so if they come to the aquarium, they can see that we're taking excellent care of all of our animals here, and it will drive them into conservation efforts as much as, uh, as, much as my passion uh, allows to transform or transcend to them. Uh, so... Education and, and conservation are all very important parts of, of our days, and uh, we try to share that with our guests every single day. Well, very important part of my day is actually taking care of all of our penguins. We do have 30 African black-footed penguins here at Odyssey. Uh, this is Jazzy. Uh, she's slightly spoiled, uh, so she will spend a lot of time with our animal care specialist. She even prefers to be held like a baby, so she'll Definitely show that off just a little bit. There we go. Uh, we do spend a lot of time up here relating with all of our birds and feeding them is a very important part of our day, but of course cleaning. So if you do see that we, we have a little bit of a mess, it's actually halfway through. Uh, one of our lovely interns was in here scrubbing away uh, because we do run programs here every single day. So it's a very important part of our day to educate our guests and we do that through behind the scenes programs uh, so that we can make sure that we're sharing our passion about all the animals that we work with and how we can make their lives better uh, through conservation efforts, uh, even something as simple as bringing a recyclable or a reusable water bottle every single day. 
you want to go grab a coffee, bring that mug with you, and it helps take care of all of our lovely animals, uh, and definitely helps these guys out. Even though they're all the way in Africa, we can make a big impact for them right here in Arizona. So one of the, my favorite things about penguins, uh, they are relationship-based, especially Africans, uh, to be able to train them to do different things. So just asking Jazzy to come up onto the scale is a very important way that um, we can make sure that we can monitor her health. So we will check their weights as well as make sure that their feet are looking really nice and pristine. Uh, we do give them a nice little varied surface, so we'll bring in different mats, uh, and different materials. Jazzy really likes towels, so that's a very easy way to be able to transition her being able to uh, hang out on one of her favorite materials, but she also gets that weight done as well. So you're looking at three of our younger penguins. So okay. they will have that juvenile plumage until they're a year and a half to two years of age. Wow. And then they will look just like Jazzy. Now you can see that they come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, one of our very important ways to be able to identify them is their friendship bracelet on their left wing. But they also have a unique pattern, a unique spot pattern on their chest and bellies so that we can identify each and every one of our penguins by sight. When you do have 30 hungry beaks coming at you at the same time, say morning and uh, so breakfast and, and dinner, uh, it gets a little bit hectic. So that nice little friendship bracelet does a very nice job of being able to tell them apart. Each one of their colors, one of those beads just means uh, a different number. My name is Jessica Peranto and I am the director of animal training at Odyssey Aquarium. As the animal training director, I oversee all of the animal interactive programs that we'll bring to our guests at Odyssey Aquarium. Well, I love animals because I've worked with them for about the past 20 years and I found that no two days are ever the same. You know, one of the things I'm most excited about to be a part of the Odyssey team is bringing the oceans right here to the desert. You know, all of us are impacted by our oceans and by educating our guests at Odyssey Aquarium, we're going to ensure that species in the ocean are around for generations to come. So I know some of you students and parents and teachers and grandparents who were out there before, you didn't kind of hear before, but what you just got to see was a pre-recorded video that we've done uh, with the two ladies, Jen and Jessica, at the Odyssey Aquarium. And the next 20 to 30 minutes, we're just gonna go live for questions and answers. So if you have any questions for them uh, about their job, about what they do, about some of the animals there at Odyssey, please fill those up with our chat box and we'll get to as many of those as we can. So, ladies, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really want to know, how did you guys get started in this business? Like, what made you uh, choose this career? How did you guys end up at Odyssey? Oh, well, thank you so much for having us. We are so happy to be uh, chatting with you and all the students today. And uh, I'm going to let Hutch tell her story first. <laughs> put me on the spot. Uh, hi, I'm Hutch. Um, I actually started out uh, working with animals when I was in middle school and high school. And um, every single opportunity I got, uh, I really uh, just took every opportunity uh, to work with uh, animals as well as children with animals. Uh, so any species that I could come around and work with and get that experience, uh, I found extremely vital and um, just really ne never said no to work, uh, working with a particular species. Uh, so now uh, I, I went to school, I knew exactly which college I wanted to go to at a pretty young age. And uh, I did wind up going to uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University and moving on, uh, starting to work in animal care. Uh, Animal care was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of fun, a lot of challenges, and a uh, great opportunity for me to learn all about many different species, uh, which then led me into uh, starting off with hippos and uh, seals at uh, one of my facilities, and then eventually actually working with penguins. Uh, and then penguins are actually what brought me to the desert out at Odyssey Aquarium. Yeah, and I'm Jess Peranto, and my title's morphed a little bit since that video. I'm, I'm the Director of Animal Care and Education. And um, one of the reasons for that transition is because education and animals go hand in hand. We break all of our behaviors with our animals down into very tiny steps called approximations. So just like we learn our ABCs first, and then how to say words, and then sentences, and so on and so on before we can read. Animal training is a lot like that. So we are very excited. Students out there, how many of you are super excited and love animals as much as we do? Raise them up high. 
I can't see you at all. So that was just a little joke. But I know you're raising your hands, but we love animals too. And uh, much like Hutch, when I was young, I went to a marine park. Um, I grew up in Ohio, which has the Great Lake Erie, but no ocean shoreline. So I saw a marine park, some of the animals that I wouldn't have normally seen, and that completely changed the trajectory of my life. And I knew I had to be involved with marine animals in some capacity. So I went to school and uh, many of us have backgrounds in biology or psychology. That's a really important, either of those are really important backgrounds for studying and working with animals. And um, I have been doing this for a while now and Odyssey Aquarium uh, asked me if I wanted to join the team. And much like Ohio, Arizona does not have a shoreline and it really um, spoke to me to be a part of this. So we're very excited to be a part of Odyssey Aquarium. We've both been here since the beginning of the aquarium and we're really excited to be sharing that with you today. Uh, I have a lot of students that are asking about the video that we saw, Hutch, and you were featuring Jazzy and they want to know okay. how old Jazzy is. Uh, Jazzy is doing wonderful. Um, it's funny you should mention that. we actually brought uh, one of our other friends with us today. So give me one second. <laughs> and this is TJ. Um, she actually is one of our other adults uh, that joins our now colony of 39 African penguins. They've been busy. They've been busy. Well, that was one of our questions is how many penguins do you have there? And I have a great question from Amanda Henning, who's Joining, she's a student from Gilder, Gilbert Public Schools, and she wants to know, how do the penguins end up at Odyssey? Oh, hey, Amanda, good question. Well, uh, our penguins came to us from different zoological facilities, uh, one all the way in South Africa itself, actually a couple of them. And uh, we work not only at the, at the beginning when Odyssey Aquarium was first opening up, but continually. Uh, as part of an accredited zoological facility with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. We work with other zoos and aquariums all the time um, to, for population management and to house animals together that really make sense that can propagate or continued uh, populations that are endangered, for example, the African penguin. And so originally, um, that's how our first 30 birds got here. And then since then, as Hutch mentioned, we've had nine hatchlings of our own. That's so cool. So I have a, another student from Evelyn Sparks and Evelyn is at uh, one of our basis primary school. And she would like to know what's the most difficult or what's the hardest species to take care of there at the aquarium? What's your opinion? I know Jess's answer is cockroaches. <laughs> um, there, there's different uh, opportunities and challenges with uh, many of the different animals that we work with. Um, no, I, I would probably say our invertebrates, uh, uh, the, the bugs that we have on exhibit, uh, you have to keep a really specific uh, temperature and humidity and giving them that um, proper environment to make sure that they uh, that, that they do really well. So they can be a little bit uh, particular about their environment. So just making sure that we're on point with our temperatures and humidities can be uh, a challenge depending on the season. Yeah, and what's really great is all of our animal care specialists have a specific um, expertise. So we have folks that specifically focus on our elasmobranchs, such as our sharks and stingrays. We have folks that focus on our penguins, our otters, our sea lions, or jellyfish. So um, there's a lot of expertise, a lot of best practice sharing and collaboration within our animal care specialists. So it's a great community of, of uh, learning. And I think you kind of led into this answer a little bit. We have a question from Victoria who's out at Pinnacle Peak Prep in Paradise Valley. She's in third grade and she wants to know if you guys have sharks at the aquarium. Oh, we do have sharks. There's a few. Yeah, we have uh, a few exhibits here with sharks in it. One of them is the exhibit behind us, which is our deep ocean theater. Uh, if you've been to the aquarium before, it's the exhibit that has our 3D movie. So this is a really cool exhibit. Um, we also have our Sea Trek experience, which you put a helmet on and you go underwater uh, with our sharks. And then we have our signature attraction, our Odyssey Voyager, which is a rotating exhibit, and our sharks are the finale of that exhibit. So lots of sharks to see here. All right, so this was a fun question. 
and I'm going to ask, I'm going to thank Harper for asking this one. So Harper is nine, and he asked us if the fish poop. Oh, Brian, we didn't catch that one. We caught Harper, but we lost the question. Harper wants to know if the fish poop in the aquarium. Mm. The fish do poop. Everything poops. We, it does. And um, luckily, during this time, the fish do not require toilet paper because it's hard to find. But uh, yes, everything poops. And that is just, a, a, it's actually something that as animal care specialists, even though we joke about it, we pay very close attention to that. For many animals, that's called scat. And by paying attention to that, when we see that, we can kind of tell the health of the animal to make sure our veterinarian animal health team can make sure that the animal's digestive tract or digestive systems are working properly. And it can be an indicator if there's an issue. So uh, everything poops and we watch that very closely. And speaking of pooping, I'm gonna talk about this little lady and how often penguins poop. I'm gonna let Hutch tell you all about that because she cleans it up all day long. Um, I, I like to say it's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, GJ and the 38 other penguins that are in Penguin Point will actually um, consume about 20% of their body weight every single day. And with that very high metabolism, uh, it has to go somewhere. And unfortunately, that is what I deal with uh, pretty much all throughout the day. So penguins will, on average, go to the bathroom once or twice every 10 to 15 minutes. So it's, uh, it's, it's a lot, but it's totally worth it. I thought I thought taking care of my dogs was a challenge. That's insane. One, but it's that often. So I have a another great great question uh, from Dante, who's a third grade student, also out in Paradise Valley, and he noticed that the penguins had something on their wing, and they want to know if that's something that you guys put there to help identify them. Oh, Dante, very good. Smart call. Hutch, why don't you talk about that bracelet? Sure. Um, we do uh, kind of jokingly refer to it as our friendship bracelet, but it is an ID bracelet. So it's a band that we can adjust to each and every individual penguin. Uh, TJ is much larger than Jazzy, and Jazzy is larger than Wilma. Uh, so it's really important that we actually have a color bead identifier. So TJ over here. Uh, has red and white, and that's number two and one. So she's the 21st African penguin that has joined us at Odyssey Aquarium. Uh, she was part of our uh, larger colony that uh, started us off. Uh, we originally got 20 birds from two different facilities down in South Africa, and then TJ actually joined us from a facility on the East Coast. Uh, so she has that uh, number of 21, and she's actually the oldest individual that we have within the colony. I like to say she is 13 years young. So I have a, a question that's coming in from a kindergarten teacher out at Liberty Elementary. This is Ms. Dald's uh, question. She wants to know, is there special training that you need to obtain to work with penguins? Uh, well, uh, we do all have a um, science or psychology based degree. So a four year uh, Bachelor of Science or Arts is required um, to be able to work in animal care at Odyssey Aquarium, uh, but also um, getting in there, getting your hands dirty. So starting off and just getting uh, as much experience as possible. Uh, volunteering, interning uh, are great ways for you to get involved and actually figure out uh, where you want to go within this field because there's so many different places that you can go with an animal degree. You want to make sure that uh, you're going right down the, uh, down the right path. So I have a question that's coming in from Melissa Vargas and this is a very common question. Uh, she is, uh, Melissa's in fifth grade out at Indian Bend Elementary School, and they want to know what's your favorite animal that you work with. And I know that we're not supposed to have favorites as a parents or probably care specialists, but uh, do you guys have a favorite that you work with? Well, I think it's pretty obvious for you. <laughs> uh, for me, I do treat them like my children, and I learn as much from them as they learn from me. Um, I have an affinity for sea lions because that was the very first animal I ever learned how to train. However, I am enjoying learning about animals I never knew as much about, like a puffer fish or um, 
a jelly. So I have a question coming in from Carol Michael. How thick are the walls at the aquariums? The, the acrylic walls, the windows? Yeah, the acrylic ones. It depends on the gallonage of the aquarium. So it's a great question. And um, some of our smaller exhibits may just be, you know, a half an inch or so. And some of these big guys that hold several hundred thousand gallons of water um, are a lot thicker. So it's very important that that water stays in that habitat. <laughs> Good question. All right, so I have another question from Ashley Heap, and I'm not going to put this one to a quiz, but it's a good curiosity question. Do all of the animals have names, and do you know all the animals' names? Most of the animals do have names. Um, many of our fish and invertebrate species, because they're a school, um, and there may be dozens and dozens of fishes in that school, um, it may be hard to individually name them, but the aquarists, May or may not admit it, but they have some names for all of their animals, and we do have names as well as numbers for all of our animals as well. Every animal in this aquarium is um, has an identification, a, a true identification number, and that is just a, one of our regulations as part of that Association of Zoos and Aquariums and also the USDA. Um, but through working with them and learning their personalities, as we discussed, that's where those names come from. So. So Celia Hernandez is asking, uh, what do your sharks eat? Students. <laughs> no, our sharks are, some, depending on the species of shark, many of these are apex predators. Um, so they eat just about anything else in the, in the ocean that they want to. Um, a question that we do get a lot is, do they eat the other fish that they share the exhibits with? And while that is a normal and instinctual behavior, and it can happen, uh, we work really hard to make sure that it doesn't happen. We have very, very spoiled, very well-fed sharks. Um, so we feed these guys several times a week, and they really have no desire to look at any exhibit mates for any reason other than as a roommate. So I have a question from Lindsay Carson, who is a fourth grade teacher at a Porter Elementary out of the Mesa Public Schools. Uh, she wants to know how many different species of penguins are there, and how many different types do you guys have at Odyssey? Okay, this is all you. <laughs> um, well, the lovely part of science is that we are learning new things every single day. Um, while 17 is one of the most recognized numbers, um, we're up to um, 18 and 19, depending on uh, how you break down the species. So rock hopper is one of the most popular ones that gets broken down into northern and southern, so that would make it 18. And then there's some, uh, actually a little offset of rock hoppers off to the west as well. Uh, so it just really depends on how you kind of break them down. So arguably 17 to 19, we're letting the scientists kind of figure that one out as far as their classification goes. Uh, we do have one species, the African penguin here at Odyssey Aquarium. So I have a question from Heather out at Cactus View Elementary out in Paradise Valley. And she wants to know, how do you guys clean the penguin, the penguin exhibits? Toothbrush. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we actually have scuba divers that will go into the exhibit pool uh, twice a week. Uh, they spend uh, the evening scrubbing uh, and then they let the filters do a lot of the hard work uh, overnight. And uh, then they will also vacuum the next day. And then every single day, uh, myself, my team, uh, and any friends that want to join us uh, on, the, on the animal care team are more than welcome to come up with some scrub brushes and some squeegees. Uh, we also will uh, disinfect the rooms to make sure that uh, we're providing the best home possible for all of our animals. And something Hutch mentioned was about scuba diving. Uh, and somebody asked a question earlier about becoming an animal care specialist. That is a very important requirement, and that's a big part of scientific uh, data gathering. Um, all of our animals can't come out of the water into our environment, so it's very important that we're able to go into theirs. So scuba diving is something that you guys should definitely look into if you're pursuing a career in animal care. So we have a question for Mr. Jankowski, who is a high school teacher out at Empower College Prep, and he wants to know, how do you guys determine the age? You guys had mentioned a group of people one of the oldest. But how do you guys determine the age of a penguin if they weren't born that way? Um, actually, TJ joined us from another facility, and they do have her hatch date on record. Uh, so we were able to calculate it uh, just like our uh, birthdays. I do say hatch day because they are not mammals. They're birds. So uh, they will hatch from an egg. 
Now, here at the aquarium with our nine hatchlings, uh, we actually do a lot of observations on uh, mom and dad taking care of their clutch. Uh, they'll lay one egg, and then a few days later, they'll lay their second egg. Uh, we do anticipate that their incubation period is 38 to 42 days. So we have some really specific timelines that we pay very close attention to. Uh, with our animal care teams as well as our animal health teams. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody's uh, up up to the no and uh, can actually all work together to make sure we're providing them with a healthy environment. Uh, so we can actually set up some nest cams as well so we can observe them even when we're not in the area. All right, so I have a question. Uh, this is from a first grade student out at Basis uh, Chandler, and this is Anika Admin's question. And she says, do all the penguins need cold weather uh, for their environments, for their habitats? Well, this is one of our favorite, favorite questions that we get all the time because everybody thinks penguins are cold weather animals. Yeah, I didn't bring my parka today. <laughs> no, um, actually uh, there's, more warm weather or temperate weather um, species of penguins than there are the ones that live in the snow and cold all, all year round. Uh, so the emperor and the Adeli are spend their entire lives on the continent of Antarctica. There's five other species that will join them throughout the year, but only travel there during specific times in their migration routes. Uh, African penguins are actually similar uh, temperate zone to say the Northeast United States. Uh, so they're used to about 40 degrees at their minimum and up into the 80s and possibly 90s uh, for their maximum. So I do wear shorts and uh, short sleeves every single day when I work with the penguins, which is uh, really good. So I, uh, I, I don't pass out in the exhibit because it's pretty warm. It's actually in the 70s in our exhibit all year round. So we have several students that are asking this question, uh, the same one that Merrick Davis asked us, who's a fourth grade student out of Porter Elementary, and they want to know, what do the penguins eat? Also, small children. It's so weird. <laughs> no, uh, they will actually get a variety of restaurant quality fish. So if you wanted to go and eat the same thing as a penguin, you can do it, but do it sustainably. Uh, so they actually get capelin, hand herring, silver sides, and anchovies. Anchovies are pretty popular with many of our birds, but they all have their specific uh, type of fish that they really gravitate towards, kind of like some kids like broccoli and others want the potato chips. We will record every single thing that our penguins are eating so that we can actually compare that data all throughout the year. We can see when they're gonna go through their catastrophic molt, if a female's about to lay an egg, or if somebody's not feeling all that great. So it's really important that we get their food data as well as their weight data uh, all throughout the month. That's one of the reasons that penguins are also um, a species that's in trouble as well as many species that are in trouble is from overfishing. And overfishing means when that food is caught in too large of a quantity and not sustainably caught, meaning that they're not using the best practices to catch that fish. Um, and other animals can be caught in those nets or on those lines, and that's called bycatch. So um, penguins uh, being able to hunt and find food is a very big concern. So we want to make sure that our oceans stay abundant, full of the fish that these birds and so many other species eat as prey items. So we just have time for a couple more questions. And we really thank you guys for being here. Um, I have one question that's talking about when you guys are cleaning the tanks, do you let the animals stay in there or do you move them to a different part of the exhibit? Uh, no, this is their home, not ours. We will only relocate an animal if we need to maybe do habitat maintenance or something like that, that would be impactful on the animal's health or well-being. But when we get in there, we get in there with the animals in their environment. They are used to us because we, we spend so much time with them. Um, and so they're fairly comfortable with us in there, but we always do dive with a buddy. And that buddy is watching the animals and keeping an eye on their behavior to make sure they're not getting too close to us or that they aren't uncomfortable if we're getting too close to them. Um, with our penguins and our sea lions and some of the uh, other animals, we get in the water not only to clean their exhibits, but also to play and interact with them. Getting on scuba diving equipment and sitting at the bottom of the exhibit and interacting with them is a really fun way 
we have some sea lion pups that are starting to find that really, really reinforcing because we're in their world. We're not holding our breath. We're actually breathing underwater and uh, they find that really fun and entertaining. So uh, David from Alice Burn School wants to know, how can you tell when one of your animals, specifically one of your penguins is getting sick and need additional care? Go ahead. Well, they, um, they can show us a couple of different signs, but much like our animals at home, we pay very close attention to um, their physical response to us when we enter the room. We know which ones um, find us highly reinforcing and will approach us. For example, TJ usually comes up and brays for me in the morning. Um, what is that? Can you show us what a bray is? Oh, maybe? we can try. She finds the, the carpet really reinforcing right now. <laughs> I know. And so that bray is her vocalization, and it's called that because she sounds like a donkey bray. So carry on. Okay. Uh, so uh, we can pay very close attention to how they react to us or um, even their surroundings. Uh, if they're hanging out in a different area than what they normally hang out in, or if they look really sleepy or they are moving really slow. Um, we can also pay very close attention to their weight, how it fluctuates from week to week. They get weighed once a week and also how they respond to the food. Uh, if they are intaking much less food than what they normally do. So we actually record every single thing that each one of our penguins eats every day. So we can compare that information to the day prior, week, month and even years. Uh, so we can track their health uh, and work really closely with our veterinarian and our veterinary technician. Yeah, and that's one of the ways that we can kind of pick up on like on that, like your mom or dad would maybe see your behavior as a little abnormal and might be an indicator that you are not feeling well, but then where do they take you? You go to the doctor. So as Hutch mentioned, we have a veterinary team here um, that's here every single day. And um, they rely on us to be their eyes and ears because we have those relationships with the animals. But our animals do get regular veterinary checkups. They go to the doctor regularly. Uh, our vet stops in all the time. Um, and we're actually even training our animal species and all different species to participate in their own health care. If we can train our penguins to sit still and have the veterinarian listen to their uh, lungs and air sacs with a stethoscope, and that is, becomes a positive experience through training, that's really advantageous because it's no longer stressful. If you get nervous going to the doctor, um, but it becomes a really positive experience for you, you become less nervous every time and it's no big deal. That's what we teach our animals as well. So going to the vet or the vet coming to check on them is just part of every single day. That's why so many doctors give you a treat or a, a lollipop or something out of the the fun jar when you go visit them because they're pairing that experience, which might be scary, with something really fun and rewarding. So this is amazing. We have so many great questions coming in from our students, but I know that you ladies have other friends that you need to be taking care of there at the aquarium. So I'm gonna limit us to a lot, our last two questions. Uh, this question comes from Olivia at Esperanza, and she wants to know, what can we do to make sure penguins are safe in the wild? Oh, good question. Love that. Olivia. Go ahead, Hutch. Uh, so as uh, Jessica mentioned just a little bit ago, um, their food. Um, we want to make sure that we're eating sustainable seafood. So when you go to the store, mom and dad go to the store, make sustainable, sustainable seafood choices because we want to make sure that there's plenty of food for um, the penguins. Also, um, shop local. Um, a very big part of uh, African penguins uh, being taken into rescue and rehab centers is actually they get oiled because of the large um, shipping channel off of South Africa. Uh, so that they actually take in uh, and rehab penguins, clean them up and release them back out into the beaches that they came from when they do get oiled. So that's a really big problem also off of South Africa. So. Tiny little changes in our life. Use a reusable bag when you go to the grocery market. Say no to a straw. Get get a reusable straw that you can take with you, uh, so that you have, are making a less of an impact on their environment. That's awesome. So our our last question is specifically for you two ladies. If you could talk to your older your younger self, and you could put yourself back in our students' age and thinking about if you were in elementary school or middle school or high school. 
what do you wish you would have known then or what would you encourage our students to think about if they wanted to prepare for a job like this? Okay. Listen to your mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and no. my teachers. <laughs> yeah, and my teachers, yes. Uh, actually, my mom was always really, really supportive. She always pushed me um, at times. Um, it was, it was a, uh, I, I, I would give a little bit of pushback, but um, definitely I am where I am today because of the support of my family. Uh, and uh, yeah, keep on with the, the science and math because it's a very big part of my day every single day when they say, you're not, I'm never going to use that. Guess what? Yeah, we're using it every day. Uh, we use uh, a lot of math in, in uh, our jobs. So it's really important uh, paying attention uh, to uh, yeah, your teachers, uh, your parents, and really, really focus in on your studies. And I guess my advice to my younger self would be you can do anything you put your mind to. So keep that nose to the grindstone and work hard. And your impacts your impact as one person can affect so many people. So when we're growing up, at least in my experience, we tend to really only just focus on our lives, you know, and sometimes that can be considered selfish of us when we're students and we're younger because we're worried only about ourselves. But if you think about what you're doing every day as a student, as a sibling, as a, as a, as a child um, or anything that impacts so many other people or has the potential to. So, Never underestimate yourself. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for taking the time to come hang out with us and introduce us to some of your friends. I know, like most of the people in the audience, I cannot wait for the aquarium to be open again where we can get to come and see these animals because just seeing them behind you there, I just I have an itch to come out there again. Well, we miss our students terribly and all of our guests, um, but this is our big, big field trip season if you will so this was would be the time that we would be seeing the most students and we really miss you um, and something teachers and parents we want you to look for tell your parents and, and your teachers for sure is we are going to be offering some discounted programs for our field trips coming up so once we reopen if your school or classroom missed the opportunity you know we know everybody is impacted financially everybody's impacted by this uh, experience that's going on in the world and so we want to make sure that we can do everything we can to get our students in here to get that experience. So check our website, odysseyaquarium.com, for those discounts because those will be posted. And uh, we really look forward to seeing you all. We thank STEM Pro Live and Maricopa County so much for uh, having us today. We really appreciate the time we got to spend with you. And I think TJ is going to have a little up-close cameo as we say goodbye. But thank you so much. Nice. Thank you so much, ladies. We really appreciate it. And thank you for all of you who joined us today. I see the close up there. I can't compete with that. Uh, we do have our, some, some new friends that are going to be joining us next Friday from the Liberty Wildlife. So if you haven't had a chance to go on and register for that, that link is on our website. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week with STEM Pro Live. Bye bye, everybody. Bye, ladies. Thank you.